really does show the effectiveness and the power of the worms. You can see the worms there hanging out of his mouth. Yes. <laughs> I've literally just slipped that fish back and I was just tying on a new bunch of worms and now the other rod's away. Oh, fish number two. So I've just had a, a walk around the lake and I have found some fish feeding away and I'm really keen to put another fish on the bank so let's get going. Look at that mess. Yay! Really unusual fish and they are quite a rare car. <laughs> Hey up and how do? I can say that because today I am in Yorkshire and I have come to the newly opened M Lake at Pullbridge Farm just on the outskirts of York. Now I've not fished this place before, it only opened a few weeks ago but I'm told there are quite a lot of fish in here so it should be good for a bite now that we are going into the winter. Now for this day session I'm going to be fishing a tactic that I do rely upon quite a lot when the going is tough and that is worm fishing. So in this video I'd like to show you how, where and when I like to fish with worms. So I've got both rods in position now and um, because we've got this quite cold wind off our backs at the moment I've decided to put both the rods uh, sheltering from, from that wind. So the right hand rod is just around the back of this island there just in a, an area of slightly calmer water and the left hand rod is pretty much in a, in a similar position it's, it's just sheltering from this, this other island off to the left there and um, it just drops down into some deep-ish water. It's quite shallow around the island, on both islands. And I've got both rods just as it drops off into that little bit of, of deeper water. So I'm hoping there's going to be some fish held up, held up on both those, those areas. But what I'm going to do now, just to try and entice any more fish into the area, is just put out a few spoms of bait. Just, I'm just going to probably introduce five or six spoms over each rod to begin with. Just play it by ear at this stage, then I can always introduce more bait if I feel the need to as the session goes on. So now I'm going to put together a spot mix for fishing over the top of our worm hook baits. Here I've got with me a kilo of dendrobenas for our day session. And worms really are full of natural attractors and amino acids that all fish just find irresistible. And it really is difficult for any uh, man-made bait to compete with the natural attraction of a worm but in order to really get the best of all those attractors you have to chop them up now you can get actual dedicated worm chopping scissors which have multiple blades they allow you to chop up loads of worms at once but i like to do it slowly with a pair of braid blades just doing one at a time not really, I forgot to bring my worm scissors, so we're going to have to use braid blades, but they will do the trick. So here I've tipped in probably, oh, it's probably about three quarters of a kilo of worms into this uh, maggot box here. I put in the soil as well, so I'm just going to get chopping. So I've just finished chopping up around three quarters of a kilo of worms. And there's no whole worms at all in here now. The biggest, biggest piece is probably inch and a half, maybe two inches long. Um, I've mixed all the soil in, in there as well. So that soil is kind of absorbing a lot of the, the juices and the attractors, which I'll also obviously spod into the swim. But to give it another, another boost, another edge, I like to add some frozen bloodworm. So first of all, I'm going to tip my uh, pot of chopped worms into my mixing bowl here, soil as well. And then I'm going to add some of the frozen bloodworm. So I've probably got about three quarters of a kilo of worm 
To that, I'm going to add about half a kilo of bloodworm and mix it all in. Now, the bloodworm really does add a whole new dimension of attraction to this. And it can be sort of difficult to use on its own when you're spotting it out. It can be very messy, but by adding it to the worms and the soil, the soil acts as almost like a carrying agent. So it makes it much easier to introduce the bloodworm into the uh, into the swim. And there we have it. We have a nice sloppy chopworm bloodworm mix, absolutely packed full of natural attractors, food signals that all fish, all carp just find irresistible. It's only been 20 minutes, something like that, since I've put out a few spots of bait over the top. And we are already playing the first carp of the session. Doesn't feel huge, but it's nice just to get a bite. And that is the power of the worm. It can get your bites when a lot of other tactics will fail. You can see the worms there hanging out of his mouth. Yes! Bigger than I thought, actually. Well, we are up and running on this session. We've got a common here of around 12, 13 pounds. Not a monster by any means. It really does show the effectiveness and the power of the worms in terms of their attraction, especially on a day like this, where we are only fishing for a few hours, a short day session. And in these situations, you really do wanna maximize your chances and get as many bites as possible in the limited time that you have. But I am gonna slip him back right now because I do think there's a chance of a few more fish to come. And I really do wanna make the most of what time I've got here. I've literally just slipped that fish back and I was just tying on a new bunch of worms and now the other rod's away. And I haven't even got a landing net set up because I just, <laughs> just landed that fish. So yeah, two bites just in the space of like five minutes. This one really took off as well. Good scrap. It's only a little one as well. There he is. Hey. Oh, well, fish number two. Well, that's two bites in really quick succession. This one's probably, it might scrape doubles. It's not a big fish by any means, but like I said before, on a day like this to get two bites so early on in the session, yeah, it's proven to be uh, a great bit of fishing. Well, I've just rebaited this rig, ready to get it back out there. But before I do, I just thought I'd show you it in a little bit more detail. Now, this rig is, is basically my standard go-to blowback rig with a couple of slight changes. Um, the hook link that's tied using 20 pound Camatex Soft, that's going down to a size five wide gape beaked hook. I've got quite a long length of shrink tube there over the eye to extend the shank. I believe that helps the hook to turn better and improve the hooking properties. And if we come down the hair, I have a rig ring tied uh, just, just above the bend to create that blowback effect. Then the main differences between this and my normal blowback rig are from the hair down. Now I do tie it with a much longer hair 
and I tie it using a much bigger loop for the hair itself. Now I'll explain why I do that in a second but if we come down the hair you'll see here on the top there I have a rubber caster that looks kind of the same colour as the worms itself but that rubber caster is also acting as a, a stopper. I've then threaded on four worms which I have doubled over so they're threaded on uh, twice if you like. Then right at the bottom of the hair you can't really see it here because it blends in so well with the worms but I have an additional rubber caster. So there's two rubber casters are uh, acting as stops to sandwich the worms in between. Then below the bottom caster I just have a boily stop just to keep everything secure and in place. So yeah when you slide the top rubber caster down it acts as a nice stopper. Everything's buffered up tight against the, uh, the, the boily stop at the bottom and that, that hook bait can withstand casting and withstand the attentions to some degree of, of small fish that may be there as well. So that's good to go. I'm going to get that back on the spot that's just done me the last bite and see if we can't put another fish on the bank. Well, the action seems to have dropped off a little bit now. I'm not seeing many fish in this area. We have had a few fish and I do think they've maybe just drifted away a little bit. So I've just had a, a walk around the lake and I have found some fish feeding away just behind me on the back of the wind. Now in these situations, worms really are the perfect stalking bait. They're emitting all sorts of natural attractors and juices and also their movement can really tap into the carp's predatory instinct and trigger a bite. Right, with that said, there are fish fizzing away behind me and I'm really keen to put another fish on the bank, so let's get going. There, let me get this one here. Let's get this one caught first. Well, I think that really has just highlighted how effective worms can be in these sort of situations where you've got fish fizzing away on the bottom and you present a highly attractive natural bait. That didn't take long at all to get this bite, it really didn't. Tiny bit bigger, I think, isn't it? Not by much. Get in that net. Yay! He's a bit bigger, tiny bit. Uh, maybe not. <laughs> yeah. He'll do. He'll do. Well, that didn't take too long to get a bite at all. After seeing them fish fizzing away in this little corner, just flicked in a, a bunch of worms and uh, yeah, just laid the rod on the ground, line just tightened up, 
and that's got us a bonus fish. But this fish has done a bit of a um, bit of disturbance to so this swim. There's mud clouds kicking up as this fish was fighting where it was spooking other fish in the area. So I think it has ruined the chance of another bite. So I'm going to slip him back and go back to the swim, flick them rods back out and uh, carry on fishing over the, the two baited spots. So it's competition time and you could win one of these Aquos accessory pouches full of all the riggy bits I've used on this session. And all you have to do to stand a chance of winning is like this video, subscribe to our YouTube channel and answer this very simple question. What is the name of the lake I am fishing today at Pearl Bridge Farm? So get liking, get subscribing and put your answers in the comment section below and good luck. Well, the day is drawing to a close now. And as that sun's going down, it is getting quite nippy. But we have got one more fish. This could be the last one before it's time to call it a day, perhaps. Again, it's not, not a big fish. There he is. There he is. Well, it may be another small fish, but it's a really cool carp, this one. I think this is what they would call a, a glass carp. They have a, a pigment defect, so they have this unusual coloration to them. It's really, really unusual fish, and they are quite a rare, rare carp. But um, the day is drawing on. There isn't much daylight left, so I do want to slip them back, and uh, hopefully we can get one a little bit bigger. Well, that's it for my day session here on the M Lake. And it's been a really good day. We have put quite a few fish on the bank and hopefully I've proven just how effective worms can be. Now that we are moving into the winter, they will certainly be featuring a lot more in my angling. And I'm sure if you do the same, they will help put extra fish on the bank for you. So tight lines and good luck.